Hey there! I hope that this day number 109 is a great day for you. Today we read Deuteronomy 31 and 32, Psalm 66, and Acts 18. Let's enjoy God's Word together, starting in Deuteronomy 31. Yesterday in this book, Moses reviewed the covenant again and stressed that the choice is between life and death, and between experiencing blessings or curses. Deuteronomy 31 Moses continued speaking to the people of Israel and said, I am now a hundred and twenty years old, and I am no longer able to be your leader. And besides this, the Lord has told me that I will not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will go before you and destroy the nations living there, so that you can occupy their land. And Joshua will be your leader, as the Lord has said. The Lord will destroy those people just as he defeated Sihon and Og, kings of the Amorites, and destroyed their country. The Lord will give you victory over them, and you are to treat them exactly as I have told you. Be determined and confident. Do not be afraid of them. Your God, the Lord Himself, will be with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the presence of all the people of Israel, Be determined and confident. You are the one who will lead the people to occupy the land that the Lord promised to their ancestors. The Lord Himself will lead you and be with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. So do not lose courage or be afraid. So Moses wrote down God's law and gave it to the Levitical priests who were in charge of the Lord's covenant box and to the leaders of Israel. He commanded them, at the end of every seven years, when the year that debts are canceled comes around, read this aloud at the festival of shelters. Read it to the people of Israel when they come to worship the Lord your God at the one place of worship. Call together all the men, women, and children, and the foreigners who live in your towns. So that everyone may hear it and learn to honor the Lord your God and to obey his teachings faithfully. In this way, your descendants who have never heard the law of the Lord your God will hear it, and so they will learn to obey him as long as they live in the land that you are about to occupy across the Jordan. Then the Lord said to Moses, You do not have much longer to live. Call Joshua and bring him to the tent, so that I may give him his instructions. Moses and Joshua went to the tent, and the Lord appeared to them there in a pillar of cloud that stood by the door of the tent. The Lord said to Moses, You will soon die, and after your death, the people will become unfaithful to me and break the covenant that I made with them. They will abandon me and worship the pagan gods of the land they are about to enter. When that happens, I will become angry with them, I will abandon them, and they will be destroyed. Many terrible disasters will come upon them, and then they will realize that these things are happening to them because I, their God, am no longer with them. And I will refuse to help them then, because they have done evil and worshipped other gods. Now write down this song. Teach it to the people of Israel, so that it will stand as evidence against them. I will take them into this rich and fertile land as I promised their ancestors. There they will have all the food they want, and they will live comfortably, but they will turn away and worship other gods. They will reject me and break my covenant, and many terrible disasters will come on them. But this song will still be sung, and it will stand as evidence against them. Even now, before I take them into the land that I promised to give them, I know what they are thinking. That same day, Moses wrote down the song and taught it to the people of Israel. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, and told him, 
Be confident and determined. You will lead the people of Israel into the land that I promised them, and I will be with you. Moses wrote God's law in a book, taking care not to leave out anything. When he finished, he said to the Levitical priests who were in charge of the Lord's covenant box, Take this book of God's law and place it beside the covenant box of the Lord your God, so that it will remain there as a witness against his people. I know how stubborn and rebellious they are. They have rebelled against the Lord during my lifetime, and they will rebel even more after I am dead. Assemble all your tribal leaders and officials before me, so that I can tell them these things. I will call heaven and earth to be my witnesses against them. I know that after my death the people will become wicked and reject what I have taught them. And in time to come they will meet with disaster, because they will have made the Lord angry by doing what he has forbidden. Then Moses recited the entire song while all the people of Israel listened. Deuteronomy 32 Earth and sky, hear my words. Listen closely to what I say. My teaching will fall like drops of rain and form on the earth like dew. My words will fall like showers on young plants, like gentle rain on tender grass. For in this song I will praise the Lord, giving honor to his name, and his people will tell of his greatness. The Lord is your mighty defender, perfect and just in all his ways, Your God is faithful and true. He does what is right and fair. But you are unfaithful, unworthy to be his people, a sinful and deceitful nation. Is this the way you should treat the Lord, you foolish, senseless people? He is your Father, your Creator. He made you into a nation. Think of the past. Of the time long ago, ask your parents to tell you what happened. Ask the old people to tell of the past. The Most High assigned nations their lands. He determined where peoples should live. He assigned to each nation a heavenly being, but Jacob's descendants he chose for himself. He found them wandering through the desert, a desolate, wind-swept wilderness, He protected them and cared for them as he would protect himself. Like an eagle teaching its young to fly, catching them safely on its spreading wings, the Lord kept Israel from falling. The Lord alone led his people without the help of a foreign god. He let them rule the highlands, and they ate what grew in the fields. They found wild honey among the rocks. Their olive trees flourished in stony ground. Their cows and goats gave plenty of milk. They had the best sheep, goats, and cattle, the finest wheat, and the choicest wine. The Lord's people grew rich but rebellious. They were fat and stuffed with food. They abandoned God, their Creator, and rejected their mighty Savior. Their idolatry made the Lord jealous. The evil they did made him angry. They sacrificed to gods that are not real, new gods their ancestors had never known, gods that Israel had never obeyed. They forgot their God, their mighty Savior, the one who had given them life. When the Lord saw this, he was angry and rejected his sons and daughters. I will no longer help them, he said. Then I will see what happens to them, those stubborn, unfaithful people. With their idols they have made me angry, jealous with their so-called gods, gods that are really not gods. So I will use a so-called nation to make them angry. I will make them jealous with a nation of fools." My anger will flame up like fire and burn everything on earth. It will reach the world below and consume the roots of the mountains. I will bring on them endless disasters and use all my arrows against them. 
They will die from hunger and fever. They will die from terrible diseases. I will send wild animals to attack them and poisonous snakes to bite them. War will bring death in the streets. Terrors will strike in the homes. Young men and young women will die. Neither babies nor old people will be spared. I would have destroyed them completely so that no one would remember them. But I could not let their enemies boast that they had defeated my people when it was I myself who had crushed them. Israel is a nation without sense. They have no wisdom at all. They fail to see why they were defeated. They cannot understand what happened. Why were a thousand defeated by one and ten thousand by only two? The Lord their God had abandoned them. Their mighty God had given them up. Their enemies know that their own gods are weak, not mighty like Israel's God. Their enemies, corrupt as Sodom and Gomorrah, are like vines that bear bitter and poisonous grapes, like wine made from the venom of snakes. The Lord remembers what their enemies have done. He waits for the right time to punish them. The Lord will take revenge and punish them. The time will come when they will fall. The day of their doom is near. The Lord will rescue his people when he sees that their strength is gone. He will have mercy on those who serve him when he sees how helpless they are. Then the Lord will ask his people, Where are those mighty gods you trusted? You fed them the fat of your sacrifices and offered them wine to drink. Let them come and help you now. Let them run to your rescue. I, and I alone, am God. No other God is real. I kill and I give life. I wound and I heal. And no one can oppose what I do. As surely as I am the living God, I raise my hand and I vow that I will sharpen my flashing sword and see that justice is done. I will take revenge on my enemies and punish those who hate me. My arrows will drip with their blood and my sword will kill all who oppose me. I will spare no one who fights against me. Even the wounded and prisoners will die. Nations, you must praise the Lord's people. He punishes all who kill them. He takes revenge on his enemies and forgives the sins of his people. Moses and Joshua, son of Nun, recited this song so that the people of Israel could hear it. When Moses had finished giving God's teachings to the people, he said, Be sure to obey all these commands that I have given you today. Repeat them to your children, so that they may faithfully obey all God's teachings. These teachings are not empty words. They are your very life. Obey them, and you will live long in the land across the Jordan that you are about to occupy. That same day the Lord said to Moses, Go to the Abarim Mountains in the land of Moab, opposite the city of Jericho. Climb Mount Nebo and look at the land of Canaan that I am about to give the people of Israel. You will die on that mountain as your brother Aaron died on Mount Hor, because both of you were unfaithful to me in the presence of the people of Israel. When you were at the waters of Meribah, near the town of Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, you dishonored me in the presence of the people. You will look at the land from a distance, but you will not enter the land that I am giving the people of Israel. Let's turn to Psalm 66. Our glorious God deserves glorious praise. Note that this psalm shows the importance of confessing our sins to God. The Hebrew title is A Song. Psalm 66 Praise God with shouts of joy, all people. Sing to the glory of His name, 
offer him glorious praise. Say to God, How wonderful are the things you do! Your power is so great that your enemies bow down in fear before you. Everyone on earth worships you. They sing praises to you. Their songs give honor to your name. Come, all peoples, and see what God has done, His wonderful acts among people. He changed the sea into dry land. Our ancestors crossed the river on foot. There we rejoiced because of what He did. He rules forever by His might and keeps His eyes on the nations. Let no rebels rise against Him. Praise our God, all nations. Let your praise be heard. He has kept us alive and has not allowed us to fall. You, O God, have put us to the test, as silver is purified by fire, so you have tested us. You let us fall into a trap and placed heavy burdens on our backs. You let our enemies trample us. We went through fire and flood, but now you have brought us to a place of safety. I will bring burnt offerings to your house. I will offer you what I promised. I will give you what I said I would when I was in trouble. I will offer sheep to be burned on the altar. I will sacrifice bulls and goats, and the smoke will go up to the sky. Now... All who honor God, come and listen, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I cried to him for help. I praised him with songs. If I had ignored my sins, the Lord would not have listened to me. But God has indeed heard me. He has listened to my prayer. I praise God because he did not reject my prayer or keep back his constant love from me. Now let's turn to Acts 18. In chapter 17, opposition hounded the steps of Paul, Silas, and Timothy, first in Thessalonica and then in Berea, The people of Berea are an example for us all, and that's why so many churches are named after their city. Then Paul in Athens debated with the philosophers of his day. Acts 18 After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, for Emperor Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see him and stayed and worked with him, because he earned his living by making tents, just as they did. He held discussions in the synagogue every Sabbath, trying to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul gave his whole time to preaching the message, testifying to the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah. When they opposed him and said evil things about him, he protested by shaking the dust from his clothes and saying to them, If you are lost, you yourselves must take the blame for it. I am not responsible. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. So he left them and went to live in the house of a Gentile named Titius Eustus, who worshipped God. His house was next to the synagogue. Crispus, who was the leader of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his family, and many other people in Corinth heard the message, believed, and were baptized. One night Paul had a vision in which the Lord said to him, Do not be afraid, but keep on speaking and do not give up, for I am with you. No one will be able to harm you, for many in this city are my people. So Paul stayed there for a year and a half, teaching the people the word of God. 
When Gallio was made the Roman governor of Achaia, Jews there got together, seized Paul, and took him into court. They said, This man is trying to persuade the people to worship God in a way that is against the law. Paul was about to speak when Gallio said to the Jews, If this were a matter of some evil crime or wrong that had been committed, it would be reasonable for me to be patient with you Jews. But since it is an argument about words and names and your own law, you yourselves must settle it. I will not be the judge of such things. And he drove them out of the court. They all grabbed Sosthenes, the leader of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the court. But that did not bother Gallio a bit. Paul stayed on with the believers in Corinth for many days, then left them and sailed off with Priscilla and Aquila for Syria. Before sailing from Cenchrea, he had his head shaved because of a vow he had taken. They arrived in Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He went into the synagogue and held discussions with the Jews. The people asked him to stay longer, but he would not consent. Instead, he told them as he left, If it is the will of God, I will come back to you. And so he sailed from Ephesus. When he arrived in Caesarea, he went to Jerusalem and greeted the church, and then went to Antioch. After spending some time there, he left and went through the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the believers. At that time, a Jew named Apollos, who had been born in Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent speaker and had a thorough knowledge of the Scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and with great enthusiasm he proclaimed and taught correctly the facts about Jesus. However, he only knew the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him home with them and explained to him more correctly the way of God. Apollos then decided to go to Achaia, so the believers in Ephesus helped him by writing to the believers in Achaia, urging them to welcome him. When he arrived, he was a great help to those who through God's grace had become believers. For with strong arguments he defeated the Jews in public debates by proving from the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. Let me start us out in prayer today. O oh Lord, our God, you are glorious, and so it is only fitting that we give you glorious praise. Let everyone worship you. May all peoples sing praise to you. Just as Moses promised, you tested your people. In the sight of all nations, you let their enemies trample them, and you put heavy burdens on their backs. Then, just as you promised in the song you taught to Moses, you have made your people jealous of nations that are foolish and don't deserve to be called a nation. It was your plan that when your people refused to obey you and believe in the Messiah and King of Salvation that you sent, you would open the door of salvation to all people groups on earth. And now, following the psalm writer's testimony, we vow not to ignore our sins. We confess them to you, so that you will listen to and grant our other prayers. And in all that we pray now, we pray that Christ will be honored. 